Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. How are you? It is summer here, and uh, we're enjoying the warmer weather. We've had a few days of rain, which has been really lovely, uh, but mostly we're just enjoying some warm but not too hot weather, so fingers crossed it stays that way. I am wearing my mini mock neck tank. Uh, this is a design by Jesse Made Designs. Um, I, it, this is the mini mock neck, but I chose to knit the crew neck <laughs> because I don't like things too tight around my neck. Let me show you how it looks. This is it. Uh, I knit mine using some sock yarn. Uh, I used wool mice up. They have um, extra beefy cakes. So if you've ever used wool mice yarn, you'll know that you get a lot in one skein of yarn. They're 150 grams, so you get, um, I think it's like 570 yards, something like that. It's quite a bit, you get a lot of yarn. This is the turquoise color, and I used the um, Pure Base, which is a 100% superwash wool. Um, so because it's wool, I didn't want to use it in socks, but this is a great use for it. I got one tank top out of one skein of yarn. Now this tank top is um, quite a fitted tank top and it's not very long. I did knit it longer than the pattern calls for um, because that's my preference. What I did was I started at the top and worked my way down. When I got to a couple inches past the underarm, um, I pulled from the center of the ball and I knit the neck band. And then I just used whatever yarn I had left to knit the rest of this tank top. So I really, used every little bit of yarn that I had. Um, I really like the color and I think this is something I could wear in the summer and I think I could wear this as a layering piece underneath other sweaters or shirts. Um, because it is quite close fitted, it would be, an, it, I think, a nice layering piece. Um, it would lay quite uh, nicely underneath things. But also I like the way that it fits on, on the shoulders. It covers bra straps, <laughs> which for me is, is something I like. And uh, yeah, the mini mock neck tank by Jessie Mae Designs. If you are in the market for a summer knit, <clears throat> something like a tank top or something lacy or something fun, I would check out her designs. She has lots and lots of really cool um, designs and I think something for everyone. Also, she's really great at having people with different bodies uh, model her stuff so that you can probably find someone who is similar to you um, or a similar body shape to you so you can have um, a fair idea of how it will look on you and I, I think that's helpful when you're choosing a pattern. Um, I have a few things off my needles. I got a haircut yesterday and I'm still trying to figure out which way my hair wants to go. Um, so I'll start with the things that I finished and then I'll start, I'll show you something that somebody else finished. <laughs> um, I knit the last of my uh, violently green mittens. Um, this is just a, a pair of the World Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. I used some Cascade Anthem that I had purchased for the purpose of, of knitting mittens to be donated. And so these are super bright green and lots of fun. Um, I think I told you last time that I used the um, Tin Can Knits new app, which is really great. It is, um, currently it has nine patterns on it. They're all the, some of their free patterns. And what you can do is select the pattern that you want to make. You select the size that you want to make, and you can select the weight of yarn if that's an option for that pattern. And then it just um, provides you with a, a much simplified version of their pattern so that you don't have to wade through all of the numbers for all of the sizes or all of the numbers for all of the different weights of yarns that are offered. Um, it just makes it very straightforward for you to knit. So these are the world's simplest mittens and they will um, join the pile with these uh, super mittens <laughs> that I knit. This is the Cascade Anthem Held Double and the world's simplest mitten is using that same yarn but um, held uh, only one ply. So this is a worsted weight and this I would say is more of a bulky weight. Um, and they all have strings <laughs> so they can be um, hopefully not lost. And they're going to go into my donation pile for Craft for Yeg. 
I also knit a pair of socks. Um, every summer, uh, there are podcasters who do sock challenges. In fact, they're, they're ongoing all the time. Um, Knitting Natty, who is a uh, knitting podcaster who used to live in New York, but is now going to be traveling the United States in a van, um, hosts, hosts a sock along where you have to try and make a sock in a week. And I decided I would do that um, because it's fun to challenge yourself sometimes. So I knit two socks. These are the Fairground Socks, a pattern that has just come out in the last, I would say, month. It's by uh, K.F. Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I used some leftover um, Polka Dot Creek fibers um, in the peach colorway. This is their sock yarn. So I use that for heels, cuffs, and toes. And then the main event is some Tiny Human Knits. This is a colorway called um, the Dunder Knit Rainbow. And you can see that these socks are knit in a really fun feather and fan. And it's a four row repeat. And I just found it really easy to knit. Like, um, I think that four row repeat keeps your mind uh, a little bit entertained. And so I just found that these socks just flew by. Um, I did want to mention these socks because they have a couple of interesting features. And if you're a sock knitter, um, sometimes it's fun to try out new ways of knitting either heels or toes. Often cuffs are pretty similar. So this is a pretty standard one by one rib cuff. But the heel, I'll show you, it looks a lot like um, an afterthought heel or a short row heel, but it's not. It is knit um, as you knit the sock. Kay Jones calls it her butterfly heel. And what you do is you knit down to where you want to put the heel in your sock. And I'm not going to give you all of the details because this is Kay's pattern. And I think that um, she deserves to be paid for the work that she's put into designing this heel. But the basics of it is you knit side to side um, using decreases, and then you continue to knit and add the stitches back using increases. So on the way, um, as you're making it shorter, you use decreases. As you're making it bigger, you use increases. And I really, uh, I really enjoyed knitting that heel. I think it went pretty quickly. I like the way it fits. And the, one of the things I really like about this heel is that there's no gusset, which means that the stripes continue completely uninterrupted. Um, now, for some people, when you knit, a, let's say a heel flap and gusset, or um, various different kinds of afterthought heels, or, or not afterthought heels, um, various different like short row heels, it could be that the stitch row here is interrupted because you're changing the number of stitches on your needles as you um, increase through the gusset through here. Um, but because of the way that this heel is knit, um, it doesn't actually affect the striping pattern at all. And it fits really nicely. Um, I'm not sure if that's because the front of the sock is also in a lacy pattern. So it is already going to have more give than, let's say, straight stockinette or maybe something with cables. But um, I'm really happy with how this, this heel fits my foot. And I'll pop in a picture or two here of uh, me wearing them um, because I'm really happy with it. And the other thing that this um, sock pattern features is something called um, an umbrella toe. Um, this is also a pattern um, that, or uh, I guess a feature of socks that Kay has um, inserted into her socks. Uh, it, it's a, a familiar pattern to me. I have knit a toe like this before. Um, and it just features decreases sort of around, I would say, one, two, three, four, at probably eight points. At eight points around the sock, you do decreases, but not every round. And you get this sort of, um, what she calls an umbrella shaped toe, um, but it is quite a rounded toe. And I have seen patterns like that before, but altogether, I really enjoyed knitting this pattern. I think partly because there was a fun lace pattern that kept me entertained. There was a different heel for me to try. And then there was this toe that was um, a little bit different than what I normally knit. So it was really fun. I really enjoyed knitting these socks and I really am happy with how they turned out. 
So those are some finished socks. And that's all the things that I have finished off my needles right now. But somebody else in my house has been working on some stuff. Uh, my older daughter um, has taken up an interest in crochet. Um, so luckily for me, I have just finished a big crochet <laughs> project. And so I have a little bit of experience with crochet, but crochet is not my, it's not my area of expertise and I'm not as confident in knitting as I am, or crochet as I am with knitting. However, together the two of us are learning <laughs> and she wanted to learn how to make some granny squares. So I popped out to my local yarn shop, the Fiber Nook, um, because I knew that they had this yarn called Instagranny. Instagranny is a sock yarn that is a little bit similar to self-striping sock, sock yarns, but this yarn is meant for making um, granny squares. And the idea is that the colors will change for you. So you don't have to change as you go around the granny square the yarn does the color changing for you. So we picked up three different balls uh, for her to play with, and we decided maybe she could make a little blanket for the dog. Um, so let me just show you what she made. These are the three different colors of granny squares, and each ball in, of the Insta Granny yarn um, makes three squares. So she made uh, a little nine patch blanket, um, and I think she did a really good job. She was, she got really good at figuring out the t her tension for the color changes. And all of that went really well. The only hiccup we had, which is, yeah, I guess the only hiccup we had was that in between each square of the granny, Insta granny, is some yarn for edging or for um, seaming together. It wasn't quite enough to do an extra round, like an extra granny, round and so this last round does pull in a little bit um so it is a little bit puckery but having said that i have not blocked this um, and it does seem to have a bit of give so i think maybe if i blocked it it might be a different story um but fortunately for us our dog doesn't really care um so this is his blanket it's used it's made using three balls of the insta granny um yarn, uh, which I will link to below. She used a five millimeter crochet hook um, and she really enjoyed herself actually. And that's the dog's blanket. Now she's decided she wants to work on making some uh, amigurumi. So she is currently in the process of making some tiny stuffed dinosaurs because that was one of the easier projects we could find online for her to start with. And so uh, as she continues down her little crochet rabbit hole, I'll continue showing you some of the things she's been making. I've been trying to ask her if she will um, come on the podcast and do an interview. She doesn't seem too, <laughs> too compelled to do that this time. However, um, you never know, things may change. I don't know why my hair's bugging me today. Um, she may change her mind and if she does, um, she's more than welcome to join me on our show and I'm sure that you would love to hear from her. Um, but in the meantime, as I said, I'll just keep showing you the things she's working on. So Nitty Natty had a sock knitting knit along and as I showed you, I knit two socks in a week. So that was a fun little challenge. Um, but sort of around the same time, Stephen West has started a surprise sock along. Um, Stephen West is sort of known for his um, shawl, shawl alongs, mystery shawl alongs mystery knit alongs, uh, where you knit often a really, really large, <laughs> really, really large shawl um, in the span of about four weeks, or at least that's how the clues are spaced. Um, I have done the um, mystery shawl along and I find it um, a lot of knitting. I can keep up with his clues from week to week, but it I, I sort of have to only knit on that and just maybe have small projects on the side because you do have to be committed to the knitting of that. The other thing with Stephen West's mystery shawls is that they do take up a fair amount of yarn. Often they require four or even five skeins of yarn and that is a commitment for a lot of people. It could be that you have some of that yarn in your stash, which is great, but not everybody has that yarn in their stash or maybe they want to get new yarn to try. So that can be a bit of an investment. Um, 
So when Stephen West came up with a surprise sock along, I thought, well, that's fun. It it's a less um, it's less of a time commitment because socks they just don't take as much time to knit as shawls, um, and less of a yarn commitment. So for these socks, you needed two different colors of yarn, and so two skeins of sock yarn. Um, even part skeins, depending on what you wanted to use, is a lot more manageable for more people, I think, than um, buying four or five skeins um, to join in a mystery shawl along where you're not even sure of what you're going to be getting in the end. So I um, I think I showed you some of my, my really bright <laughs> colors that I chose for these Contrast Blast socks, which is the name of the sock pattern. Here is my yarn. This blue is a wool miser. It is their sock base, also in the turquoise. So it's the same color as what I'm wearing right now, but in a slightly different base. This base has 25% nylon and 75% uh, wool. And then this is some sock yarn by Leo and Roxy. Leo and Roxy is um, a dyer out of Ontario, I believe. And wow, do they do great neons. Um, I was actually really excited to get this neon color as a contrast, partly because I think it looks fabulous with the blue, um, but also because I think that this will be a fun yarn to have in my stash to use for heels, cuffs, and toes for other pairs of socks. Just like um, this peach, which I originally purchased to knit my um, Stephen West mystery shawl from last year, um, this peach. But I'm finding that it's really fun as a contrast for self-striping. And I sort of thought it'd be nice to have some leftovers that I could use then for different heels, cuffs and toes for other socks. So those are my colors that I'm using. And um, each week, Stephen gives you a part of the sock. So these socks have a right sock and a left sock. Um, and that just means that the design basically swirls around the foot in the opposite direction. I have been knitting these socks, um, not two at a time, but each week I have knit the right portion on the right sock and then I go and I complete the left portion on the left sock. So I have, um, I guess, two kind of part socks on the go. Today I'm going to show you the right sock because I have finished all of clue three on this right sock. Now, if you are currently knitting the um, Stephen West socks and you don't want to see this, or maybe you're not interested in having the clues spoiled, uh, look away now because I'm going to show you um, the craziness that is a Stephen West sock pattern. Okay, ready? Look away. That's some bright sock. This is, this is my right sock and maybe I'll just talk you through it. So um, week one was the cuff, so the ribbing, and then there was a little bit of cable action. We did some mosaic mosaic color work, which is um, not the same as stranded color work. In mosaic color work, you're only working with one color at a time. And so you're knitting some stitches and you're slipping other stitches to create a color work pattern. This is mosaic knitting. Uh, so that was week one. Week two was this um, also mosaic knitting, um, but in a different pattern and, and a different texture. But this again was only using one color at a time and then slipping some stitches to create that color work effect. And then the other part of week two or clue two was this heel. This is a heel flap and gusset. So we did the heel flap, which involved some color work. Uh, this also was um, slip stitches <laughs> and we did a heel turn. I don't think any of this is news for anyone. And then uh, week three, was uh, again, some mosaic color work here and the gusset decreases along the side of the sock. And what made them unique was this cable pattern running down the side of the sock. So I have completed three clues. There's only four clues in the sock, so we're almost done. Um, but this sock already, the foot of this sock for me measures about five inches from the back of the heel back here to what I have knit. And um, for my socks, I only knit them to about seven inches and then I start the toe. So there really isn't that much of that sock left to do. Um, I'll be interested to see what Steven decides to do for a toe because often toes are a place where designers can sort of make their mark or try something unique. Um, but I have been enjoying um, 
the fun of getting a new piece of your pattern every week without having a huge um, burden of knitting. I guess that's not really a burden, but for some people it can feel like um, an overwhelming amount of knitting if you're knitting one of Stephen's shawls and there's quite a bit of, of knitting to do every week. Uh, whereas this one I'm finding very manageable and I think that other knitters are too. So I'm really happy that I decided to make both socks um, throughout the course of this knit along. I think if I only made one sock, it'd be hard to go back and um, start the second sock again. Uh, so I think that that would um, be difficult for me. So I'm enjoying the fact that I have two on the go. And then after next week, they'll probably be done because there won't be that much knitting left. Uh, you will notice, I'm gonna show the sock again. So just avert your eyes if you're not interested, uh, that this is quite a long leg for me. You could absolutely um, eliminate some of these sections in here in the, the first mosaic section as well as the second mosaic section and in fact Stephen tells you how to do that so if you were finding that the sock was going to be quite long you could absolutely um, get rid of some of those sections. Um, I think these are just going to be some really cozy tall socks for me um, or whoever steals them. <laughs> It'd be hard to get away with stealing these socks because they are very, very noticeable. Like it's, they don't really look like any other socks in my wardrobe. However, having said that, um, Stephen West will, and many designers, as you're doing an, uh, a knit along or really any knit, um, they will show people's patterns or um, projects as they're working on them. And there is somebody out there who has used my color palette. And I was a little bit, not offended, but I was like, hey, that's my, those are my colors. Of course, other people can come up with the same colors. I don't have proprietary rights to them, but um, I was a little annoyed. <laughs> However, their socks look great, um, so I can't fault their taste. Uh, that, so those are my Stephen West socks. I would show you the other one, but they aren't as... Um, they aren't as far along as these ones. I haven't had the chance to work clue three on my second sock, but um, by the time I see you again, they will be done and you can be blinded by these socks again. Um, I have, it would seem a problem with socks because um, I cast on another pair of socks uh, and these will look very familiar to you because they are the fairground socks in the same yarn again. Um, I had used a little under half of a skein of my self-striping yarn. This is what it looks like caked up. Um, and and I guess this is something I don't I don't know if you weigh your sock yarn as you're using it, but for me, um, I will often when I'm finished a pair of socks, I'll weigh how much of that self-striping sock yarn is left. And oftentimes, if I use another color for heels, cuffs, and toes like these ones here which I usually do for self-striping socks, I will use about half or even slightly less than half of a skein. And that leaves me with enough yarn to make another pair of socks. Um, I know not everybody has this. It depends on your foot size. And it also depends on how long of a leg you like to knit. It depends on if you use the striping yarn for the cuff and the toes as well and the heel. Um, so it, there's many variables, but for me, I find that after I have knit myself a pair of self-stripping socks, such as these ones, uh, with a moderately long, like I wouldn't call this a long cuff, sort of my standard length, um, I do have quite a bit left. And so I am knitting a pair of the fairground socks in the exact same colorway for my niece. She is... Um, a lovely niece. She likes hand knit socks. And also she's um, been working with my daughter on some things. So I, as a way of saying thank you, I wanted to knit her some socks. So this is the exact same pair um, that I knit before. The only difference is, is that, um, well, there's a couple differences, I guess. This sock uh, and this sock start at a different point in the striping sequence. And I decided that I would knit these socks just a little bit longer in the foot because her foot is a little longer than mine. So I'm going to add two stripes in the foot and this pair is going to be um, not exactly matching. So the striping pattern in this pair of socks, as you can see, pretty much matches. I started on the same color and I worked to the same color at the toe. Uh, what I'm going to do is work, uh, this is a 12 color 
striping repeat. So I worked 12 stripes for the cuff and then the foot was, I think, I don't know, 14, no, 16, 16 stripes maybe. So for this pair, uh, in the interest of not wasting uh, any yarn in between, I'm going to work, I worked 12 rounds or 12 stripes for the leg. The foot is going to be 18 stripes. And then, so that'll be one and a half um, color repeats of the, of the striping pattern. And then the next sock will start at the, wherever I left off. So they are going to be um, fraternal twins rather than identical. So they will have slightly different striking patterns, which I think will also be fun, but also maximize my use of the yarn. So that's another pair of fairground socks on my needles. And finally, <laughs> Um, I started the As If Tea Light. This is a pattern by, oh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the designer's name here. I want to say it's Knit and Crochet. I'm going to put her name here because I, I want her to get all the credit. Um, this is a really cute top that is knit using two yarns held together. One yarn is a, um, fingering weight yarn. I'm using the yarn that the pattern suggested. So this is some swanky sock. Look how deep that is. This is swanky sock by Magpie Fibers. It is a 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. So it's quite soft and smooth. Um, the color is Midnight Train to Georgia and it is very deep. Um, and then the yarn that I'm holding with it is a lace weight, just drop two stitches and pick them up, okay. Um, it's a lace weight, but it's just a, a cashmere lace weight. What? Um, it, it is called Plume, and it is. it looks like this. Ooh, so soft and, and fluffy, like it has a really lovely halo, it is so soft. And so when I knit these two together, I get something up, close to a DK weight, and this is what the fabric is looking like. I think maybe you can see if I hold this close, you can see that there's a bit of a halo off the yarn and that's from the cashmere lace weight. It is it's so soft and delightful. And so this, um, the way that this works is there's um, some intarsia in the front where you knit the yarns held together and then um, some sheer fabric with just the lace weight. Um, so it's going to be sort of a sheer top and in the back, it's mostly sheer. So this is sort of like an evening going out top in my mind. And I chose navy because I thought that would be a really lovely, um, sort of elegant color that I could pair with jeans or some black dress pants maybe. Um, but I'm really enjoying this knit. It is going quite quickly. I think partly because of the um, rather looser gauge uh, because because it's knitting too close to a DK weight with those two yarns held together. And it's also a really light fabric. So this is the amount of um, knitting I have been able to accomplish with one skein of that lace weight yarn. This is 12 inches so far. And that is what the pattern calls for for the body, but I will be making mine a little longer um, because that's what I prefer. So I'm gonna add probably two inches to the body and then I'll start the intarsia at the top but I'll probably hold it up and see how I like the length of it um, when I get there. I'm thinking at least two inches maybe three would be um, a nice length and I will have lots of yarn left over uh, because I've knit already this much with one skein of the lace weight and that has to be I think more than half of the length of the top and then I still have this much of the fingering. So I should have lots of yarn left over. Uh, and that gives me the confidence to go ahead and increase the length of the body to something that I think will be a little bit more comfortable for me. So that's the As If Tea Light. I do, as always, have some knitting plans in my future. Sometime today, Canada Post will be delivering to me some yarn so that I will have all of the things I need to make my tessellated vest, which is um, the Rhinebeck, one of the Rhinebeck sweaters designed by Andrea Maori for this year. 
I have never been to Rhinebeck and I won't be going this year, but one day, one day I'll go to Rhinebeck. And in the meantime, I like to knit the sweaters. It's a really fun opportunity to join in a huge knit along with a lot of like-minded knitters. It is so fun to see the different colors that people choose. And I will be going to some yarny events this fall. Um, I will be at the Prairie Fiber Festival in September. That happens in Lacombe, Alberta. And then I will be at Knit City in Vancouver, which happens the weekend after that <laughs> in Vancouver. So I will be having opportunities to wear my knitted garments. Uh, besides just everyday life, people need to be warm. So um, I'm looking forward to joining along and knitting a vest because I, I don't have, I have maybe one vest in my knitted wardrobe. And I think that's something that I could wear more as a layering piece uh, through the fall and winter. So I'm looking forward to trying something different. And I think a vest versus a pullover is a nice option. Uh, the other thing I like about this option is that uh, for people who want to participate in this knit along and either um, find knitting pullovers to be a lot of knitting. So it could be that, that a vest is, is a nicer option because you just don't have to worry about all of that sleeve knitting. But also it can be a little bit more cost effective because you're, you're not having to buy as much yarn. You have um, only the body to worry about and not the sleeves. So I think that having a vest option is really, really nice for a lot of reasons. Um, some people live in places where they just wouldn't wear pullovers, but vests are really nice. And I have seen some of the sample knits where people knit the vest to be sort of closer fitting so that they wear it just by itself and not with a layering piece underneath, which I thought was a really nice um, option too, depending on where you live and what you're looking for in a knitted garment. So I think I think it's great that Andrea Mary is thinking about these things that um, having some, some layering pieces that people can participate in and wear maybe in warmer weather or in warmer climates, but also um, to keep it to uh, a more, perhaps more manageable knit for some people who might find knitting a whole sweater to be daunting, but and also having to um, purchase sweater quantities of yarn. So, I'm really delighted that there's options this year and I'm looking forward to knitting my best. So hopefully Canada Post will deliver my yarn today and I can get winding. But in the meantime, I have some things to work on. I have one more thing to show you. And this is something I had to buy, I think. I don't, I'm not sure that I had a choice. Polka Dot Creek hand dyed yarn. Um, as you know, I have used their yarns before. It's something I'm using as the peach in my um, fairground socks. And they were advertising some yarns for Calgary Stampede. Calgary Stampede is an annual event that happens at the beginning of July. And um, it's very Western inspired. There are lots of um, sort of cowboy events and cowboy themed get togethers and cookouts and pancake breakfasts and, um, and very Western. So, when Polka Dot Creek came out with a pad, or a self-striping sock yarn called Jolene, named after the Dolly Parton song, I had to buy it. I, like, I'm not sure that I had a choice. So this is the self-striping version. This uh, same colorway, or Jolene, the color, was also available as a speckle. So you could purchase it um, as self-striping or as a speckle. This one comes with a mini called Valentine. And when my daughter saw this self-striping set on my desk early, yesterday, she decided to correct the spelling. Because as you know, the, the Dolly Parton song is J-O-L-E-N-E. -E, and uh, I spell my name J-O-L-I-N-E. -E, so she corrected it. Thank you, Ava. Uh, so yeah, this is something fun. I'm not sure when I'm going to knit these socks. But uh, I appreciate the fact that they have a 50 gram skein so that I can buy... Um, 50 grams with a mini and not have any wastage. Uh, for me, that, that works really nicely. I know that other people have, um, if you have different size feet or if you like to knit more than one pair of socks out of your out of your skein of yarn, then 100 grams is great, but I do appreciate a 50 gram option. So this is the Jolene colorway by Polka Dot Creek. And again, I'm not sure I had a choice. And I'm not sure when I'm gonna knit those, but I'm gonna enjoy looking at them in my stash. I hope that you're having fun knitting whatever you're knitting. Uh, this summer of socks is really um, ramping up for me. 
The socks are, are, are just flying off my needles and I'm really enjoying knitting them. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. I have some plans to wind up some more sock yarn in the near future. Are you knitting socks where you are? Socks tend to be something that you can wear <clears throat> most of the year, depending on what your activities are and where you're going. I, I, I like to have socks on in the evening if I'm cool. Um, and definitely in the winter, hand knit socks are always on my feet. Um, so it's nice to have a vast assortment of hand knitted socks. But also I find that there's something that people like to receive. So I have a box also of gift socks that can be um, handed out willy-nilly <laughs> as, as events arise. Um, so it's nice to have a stash of some sock yarns for gifts as well. I hope you're knitting socks or maybe you're knitting tank tops or crochet and granny squares or even little amigurumi. Whatever you're making, I hope you're finding a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment out of it. One of the great things about crafting for me is um, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of creativity, and a sense of pride in the things that I have made. And I hope you're getting all of that out of your making. I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to do the things you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.